Hello and welcome by Technicons to yet another video which will be very very important for you and if you take the steps seriously then you could be the next CSIR exam topper. So how do CSIR net toppers clear their exam on their first attempt? Yes, we are going to look at it by Technica in its all 15 years of experience have analyzed their toppers and also taken feedback from them and we have come out with all the ways what they used to do if you follow the same you could be the next topper the first thing they do is they plan their preparation in a personalized way yes you're not borrowing timetable for anything you're not downloading a standard timetable so first thing is planning no one everyone tells you plan well plan well but no one will tell you how to plan well so here are some strategies the prop the problem in planning is it's always a very personal thing no one else's plan will work for you so here are some tips which will help you plan better this time or next time first thing is plan your day first thing in the morning okay so chalk out a daily schedule and then most important is stick to it yes a list of the chapters and topics you want to study and then prioritize your list this way you will always know where to get started okay i have these topics to cover which will require my maximum concentration what do i need to prepare in the early morning hours where my concentration is maximum right and then you decide which parts of the day you wish to study chalk out a daily schedule and then stick to it and uh, so make a list of the chapters you want to study and prioritize your list next thing you have to make up is a monthly weekly schedule and a monthly schedule for every unit you have to design your monthly schedule and even uh, some six months uh, half yearly schedule and weekly also remember no one can stick to their plan 100 percent so i don't want to you to get disappointed if we, if in case you're not able to complete whatever was assigned for the day whatever you have assigned yourself for the day this is again a property of toppers which i'm telling you that they don't get disappointed by uh, some minor setbacks okay yes you cannot follow it 100 percent but try to achieve maximum of it in some day if you have just 10 percent completed don't get agitated or irritated if you could not stick to it so be flexible be agile be flexible Keep some extra days so that if someday these things happen, you can shift those topics to the next day. But never give up on planning, right? It, you can just keep on changing your planning time to time. Next thing is they understand the concepts really well. Memorizing is not going to help. You can write down a particular topic many times, repeat it repeatedly, or you can tell it or uh, try explaining it to someone repeatedly. But then again, you are actually remembering it so that it goes into your uh, subconscious mind. But you, this is an exam you are preparing for research. So try to have a similar mindset, okay? Because part C questions, analytical questions is not going to help with just memory. You need an, an, a proper understanding. Completing or just reading the whole syllabus is not going to help. What you have to do is you have to follow a smart study pattern. That is go through the old papers and focus more on the most important topics. Remember, CSI and NetGRF exam not only requires hard work, but it also needs proper guidance and patience to tell you which are the minor details. What exactly you have to concentrate on? Okay, so if you have protein structure, then did you know that you have to also cover protein conformations? You have to cover um, the different uh, tertiary structures such as uh, motifs or some terms like motifs, domains, uh, turns, loops. You have to know every detail of them, even the types of turns that, that are there. It's not mentioned in the syllabus, but these are the minute details. Type 1, type 2, type type 1, type 2, type of dash type of turns, the phi shy values for those. Yes, they are asked in exam right or else the protein conformation the protein denaturation protein folding what type of chaperons are there what are the bacterial chaperons what are the eukaryotic chaperons so these are the minute details which if you are not availing any proper guidance then you may miss out on these minute details later in exam when you get a question on protein denaturation you might wonder i have studied protein structure then why am i not able to answer this question right so you need to understand the concept well yes uh, coaching classes will definitely give you that and that to authentic and genuine with excellent track record plus you can also study from standard reference books but that is again going to take time 
You have to analyze the concept from every perspective. The toppers, when they study a topic many a times in my classes, uh, there are many uh, to be toppers or later I have found out that they top the exam. I remember they will be asking some very intelligent and smart questions in the uh, during the classes. So when I'm teaching a particular topic, they will immediately think from some other perspective and they will clarify their doubt. You have to always run your mind from the analytical point of view. This is really helpful in your part C questions. Okay, so review the material you covered every week and evaluate how well you did at retaining the information. Yes, memory is also needed, but along with understanding the concepts. If you are lacking any in any topic, please go back and study those topics once again. The next thing they do is they make efficient shorthand notes. Yes, you have to prepare notes and then make concise of those notes. You have to concise those notes to make it even shorter, right? Because reading through those six months, imagine how much notes you would have made. That if you want to revise them all together, it will be very intimidating. So you must have learned some points by heart. So why to just waste time in reading all those things again and again? So just the key important points or something which you are forgetting again and again. So make notes of your notes. This is something which nobody might have told you before, right? Only the key points and important information. And if you are a working, uh, working individual or a student. Who are preparing for this exam you can scan your notes in your phone and keep it handy make some pdf file or something and whenever you get time you can work on your goal by reading them whenever you are getting any spare time while traveling or when you're just wasting your time so you can go through those notes right the next thing is yes toppers generally take a smart way they will generally go for a coaching class they will train at a coaching class so this can be one of the methods to clear but do check coaching success record, study material, right? A great coach can change your life. Remember that. But uh, before enrolling, uh, a coach can also change your life in another way. So you have to uh, see the track record, the study material, what test series they have. Or you can just ask the friends who have enrolled in that, that how they are uh, attending the classes over there, right? Are they benefiting or not? So you yourself will get to know. Success doesn't depend on coaching only. Yes, hard work is also required. All right. So uh, you must also check other details like you can join online coaching classes and even see if that uh, they have the service of doubt solving because while preparing self preparation, you will get many doubts. Even if you have online uh, enrolled for coaching later, when you go for self study at your home, that time you will get many doubts. Ensure that there is some service which will get clarified. So it is not a blockage in your preparation. Okay. They are well aware of their war field. Yes, you're going on a war. So you have to be aware of what are the pattern. What you have to know is the syllabus and exam pattern really well. Right. Anyone can tell you the exam rule. Like, okay, negative marking is there and all that. But that is only the first rule. Right. You have many other things to learn which everyone doesn't know know the syllabus exam pattern sections number of question marking the required cutoff marks how much marks will uh, make you clear the exam right next thing is second rule identifying easy questions and then deciding which question to answer first then you have to keep a balance between the time spent per question and the total time left fourth rule is recalling faster and skipping those questions where you are unable to recall things faster and fifth rule is ensuring that you have enough time to review your answers mark in the exam portal. So these will only come when you go for mock tests, when you have a uh, look at the syllabus and the um, exam pattern properly. You can also refer to the video step by step guide to start your CSI preparation in case you are a beginner. But you have to understand the type of questions which must to attempt for maximum scoring. For example, at biotechnical classes, after each topic, we discuss the related CSI questions from the previous past years and we also discuss them in the class so this way they are already exposed to the type of pattern and the trend right with that you will get to know the required depth of preparation before preparation itself if you know what you're going to attend what you are going to face in the exam then your preparation will be accordingly right so the next thing that they do is they practice test series and mock tests it is important to practice mock tests, test series available online. 
So after every topic completed, try to practice the MCQ. That way you will also get uh, habituated. Like if you take mock tests and everything from different resources, you can practice books uh, online, CSR website to see, get an idea of the type of questions and to get confidence. After every topic, you just practice from different sources and even CSIR old papers as you read the topic, right? So it will help to check your preparation, where you stand and time management and also make you habituated with the CBT mode of paper. After preparation for your exams, try giving these mock tests. You can avail Biotechnica's AIMnet and Toughnet series. They are AI based. So according to your difficulty level, they will shoot questions at you. It is always good to check your preparation before sitting in the main exam. So keep doing that at least one, two months before the exam starts and uh, that will definitely be beneficial. Next thing they do is they will track their progress every day. Believe it or not how important this is. Always keep your goal in mind. Yes, how many chapters you have to complete, how many you have already completed, right? How many rounds of revision will be required? How many you have done? How many mock tests to attend? How many you have attended so far, right? So keep tracking the progress every day. You can also maintain a small note copy uh, to track this and to uh, just keep a checklist or to-do list. So completion of topics will also give you a sense of achievement. Okay, this much I have completed. But the, when the, with completion, I also mean revision as well. Just studying a topic is not completion, okay? Completion is where if I ask you something about it without even referring to the book, you will be able to answer. That is what is completion. Next, next thing they do is they maintain consistency. Okay, Do little things but do it every day. That will end up in bigger result. Whatever you have studied, revise it. Success doesn't come from what you do occasionally but what you do consistently. Right. So most of the students make this mistake during the exam that they don't revise because they keep reading new topics but they don't revise the older topics. So it is necessary to daily revise the topic. Don't attempt questions that you are not very sure of. Daily revision and solving the questions is the key to success in CSIR exam. Right? So study every day and keep a check on this. So first plan, then do it. Study, revise and act on it. Okay. Next thing about toppers is that they have laser like focus and they have a burning desire to succeed. They have sleepless nights because they have not cleared the exam yet. They can't rest properly because they are always agitated and anxious that when they are going to enter that dream institution for their dream research work. So the successful warrior is the average man any student can clear it but the ones which have laser like focus you don't get results by focusing on results you don't get results on that but you get results by focusing on the actions that produce the results okay so you have to along with that you have to also stay updated not just that i am studying on my own what is happening with the world i am not aware of that exams or interviews which are going to attend later see what research works are going on, what you would like to pursue after clearing the CSIR exam, where you would apply for interview, all these things you stay updated. And this is the most important thing, minimize distractions as much as possible. So avoidable social events, some unnecessary birthday parties or some mobile phone activities which you can skip definitely and or else postponed till you clear your exam, okay, or spending long hours chit chatting on phone or too much roaming about here and there, okay, every day you're going out and uh, spending some time outside. So all this can wait, it can, it can get postponed, right. So toppers don't do that, honestly. The next thing, they understand the difference between temporary defeats and permanent failures. This is again a very important thumb rule when it comes to exam preparation, right. So suppose you are reading Kelvin cycle and you found it difficult to understand. Now this is a temporary defeat, but what will other students do? They will quit it. They will think that it is difficult, forget it, right? But if you quit preparing altogether, just because you couldn't understand one topic, that is a permanent failure. You have to come back. You have to bounce back from temporary defeats faster than ever. And you have to know that as long as you are trying, you have not been defeated. Okay, today maybe your mind was not fresh or it was not receptive. Why not give it a try next day again? Why not give it a try with some biotechnical video? 
see if you are able to understand they are releasing so many videos with the mind maps and all try to see maybe they can make you understand but don't give up all right so don't allow obstacles to hamper your preparation because that's not what toppers do and last but not the least they take care of their health okay you will think that this is very trivial it's not important but you will realize when none of this any of this doesn't function well habits are atomic in nature but they have a long lasting effect on your life and in fact on your career also they are tiny bits of automated actions that will only come with practice that take every day without even thinking about them so if you have a habit of sitting to study in morning hour every day you will sit once you develop that habit okay eat proper food nutritious drink adequate amount of water exercise at least 30 minutes a day rest for at least 7 to 8 hours a day make your mind fresh and they will help you to memorize you show dedication towards your life and studies and believe me you're not going to get disappointed just like how toppers pave their way to their success on their own all the best biotechnicians i'll see you in the next video